Variables allow you to store and reuse values in your requests and scripts. In this video, I'll work through a few examples of how to get, set, and just use variables in general in Postman. But before jumping into that, let's have a look at the different variable scopes that exist. So there's five of them. Uh, the wider scope is the global scope. So any variable that is set in the global scope will be available to any Postman entity from request to collection to environment. So if I want to set a global variable, I can go ahead in the uh, environment quick look at the top right here and click add a new variable and set them here. Another scope is the collection one. Any variable set at the collection level will be available only to that specific collection. And to do that, I can head to, for example, my using variables collection, go into variables tab and then set a variable here. Another one is environment. The benefit of environment is being able to switch from one to the other for a single collection. So for example, here I have two environment here, prod and staging. They have the same variables defined, base URL and API key. But if I had a collection that was using both of these variables, I could switch from prod and staging just by uh, switching here, for example. We then have data. Uh, we'll go back to this one a bit later because it's using external data files. And then we have local. So a local uh, variable is specific to a single request. For example, if I go to uh, here, I can go in my pre-request script and define a value here. And this will be only available to that specific request. Cool. So with that out of the way, uh, let's jump into the first example of using variables. So one of the benefits uh, of using variables is being able to reuse them between, uh, in, the, in different places. I have this request called reuse values. And uh, two things you can see here. Um, it's a post request sending to Postmanico, which is our um, API service that just sends back whatever you send to it. And I have one, par one query parameter, which is ID, and with a value of one, two, three. And it also has a body parameter, which has the same ID here, one, two, three. So it's the same value, uh, used in two places. And if I wanted to change it, I would need to go in both of these places and keep on updating it. So to avoid doing that, what I can do is create a variable. So what I'll do, um, I'll select this one, two, three here, and then click set as variable here. So I'll click set as new variable. I'm going to call that um, user ID with the value of one, two, three, and then I'll select a scope. So I could be global, collection, or I could create a new environment, but I don't have one now. So I'll go um, global for this one, and I'll set the variable. So now you can see it's been replaced with uh, this variable. So you can see variables by uh, seeing these double curly braces around it. Um, and now I can go in my uh, body and replace the one, two, three with the same variable. So again, uh, to use variable, curly braces, the name of the variable, and it actually suggests it to me here. And then I can send my request and see that in the response, I'm actually getting uh, my ID, both in the uh, query parameters and in the body data. I can also have a look at the global variables because that's where I just saved it. And I can see that now I have this global variable called user ID with an um, initial value and current value of one, two, three. Cool. Uh, let's jump to the next example. So another benefit of using variables is being able to hide sensitive info uh, behind a variable. For example, let's say you're doing, uh, you're sharing your screen, you might not want to show your API key. Uh, or let's say you're sharing that collection with someone, um, you might just want to share with them the variable name rather than the API key that is behind it. So in this case, I have a get request called uh, hide sensitive info. And you can see that this request uh, has an API key as type of authorization. And that API key has a value of some very private key. So what we can do, the same way we did for the other one, instead of having it here in plain text, you can select it all, set as a variable, and I can now set it as a new one. And for this one, I'll put it in the collection level. So I'm going to call that uh, API key and set the variable. The same again, my value is now replaced with the variable. But now one thing to notice is that 
if I go in the collection level and collection variables, I see it, but this, the value is assigned to both initial value and current value. So the difference between the two is that the initial value is going to be shared uh, to anyone that has access to that workspace uh, or when you share the collection externally. So I will be removing this from here and I'll just put a placeholder which is enter API key here. Now anyone uh, that I share that collection with is only going to see this value but me when using the collection I will be using my current value. So if I go back here and then send that request I can see that there's an API key that was used in the headers and the value is some very private key. So that's my, my current value. Okay, let's move on to the next one. One thing you can do with, um, with variables is also um, changing them on the fly. So you can use the scripts that are available in Postman to do that. So in this case, I have this request, which is basic that has nothing for now, and it's just a get request. What I'm going to do, I'm going to add a parameter that is value. Uh, and that value, I'm actually going to use the one that we've set up uh, before. And I'm going to use user ID. So now if I send that request, you can see it's coming back with a value one, two, three. What I want to do is at every single call, uh, increment that value by one. I'll go ahead into pre-request scripts. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to define a local variable. So let's say let uh, local val equals pm dot um, globals because this one was set in the global variables dot get and then as a parameter I can put my um, variable name and again uh, it's being suggested here. So what I've done uh, created a new local variable called local val and the value is now going to be whatever the value of this variable is. So at the moment it's one, two, three. Now what I want to do, I want to update that value to be the same one plus one. So I'll go ahead again and use the PM API, pm.globals.set this time, because I want to set a value. And I'll go to user ID. And the value is local val that I've defined right before, plus one. So now if I keep on sending that request, I should see the value here uh, augment or increment. And you can actually see that <laughs> because the because the variable is set as a string, it added it at the at the back. So we need to cast it to an integer for it to work. But the ID is there. I'm modifying my variable on the fly. That's another thing you can do. Let's move on to the last one which is um, how to use variables from a file. So in this case, I have that request, which is a post request and that let's assume it creates a new user. Um, and every time I want to call that request, I pass as a parameter a body, a JSON body with a name, a location, and a username. So if I wanted to go ahead and do that at, at, at scale, I would need to come back here every time, update all of this value and keep on sending it. So one way to avoid doing that is to use a data file. So I have a file that is saved on my PC uh, that actually looks like, um, looks like this. So it's just a bunch of JSON and you can see it's a table and there's five of them, five different people with different locations, usernames, etc. So what I can do, going back to my use variables from file, is instead of having the names here, I can replace that with the variable. So because in my file, uh, this is called name, then this is called location, and this is called username. By doing this now, I can run this, run this request several times using this file as a parameter, and it should send every time a new thing. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So I have my request here. I'm going to go ahead to the collection level, click run. I don't want to run the other request. I want to make sure that I'm only using this one. I'll select a file as a parameter. So now I have uh, the file that I showed you right before and I'll run it. So this is going to run it five times. 
because there was five entries in my uh, in my file and I can look over each of them and I can see that this one used Janine Jordan as a name the second one used Edna Vinson as the name and you can see the location, the username etc have already changed but yeah, that's a few cases on how to use variables in Postman I hope this was helpful. There's a link to uh, that collection so you can see what happened if you want to see it in the description as well as a link to the learning center if you want to learn more about how to use variables. <laughs> <laughs>